What's up, nerds? My name is Dara Changali, and I'm a physics PhD student at the University of Colorado Boulder. Today, I want to talk to you about why physics is so hard. And at the end of the video, I'm also going to give you three tips that you can use to make it much easier for you to learn. So let's start by looking at Ohm's law. Well, not that one. I mean this one. Actually, no, I actually mean this one. No, I'm just kidding. That one's fake. Well, that third equation was completely made up. That second equation is definitely not in a form that many of you are familiar with. But with a decent understanding of physics, some of you might be able to pick out that this is V, this is I, and this is R. So it actually is the same equation. It just looks uglier. And that's exactly what can make physics so hard. It's math. math. And I don't just mean solving equations. I mean interpreting complex notation and understanding what it means. Like in the beginning, they just kind of give you V equals IR. And they're like, here you go. Use it. Solve problems with it. But you have no deeper understanding of it. So when you hit more upper level physics classes or read more advanced textbooks, suddenly it's like, oh, you thought you understood electrons? That's so cute. I've been having this exact experience with quantum mechanics. Like everyone thinks quantum is cool. So when I was an undergrad and I took like my second intro physics class and it was an introductory e &M class, they mentioned the word photon once and I was convinced that I was learning introductory quantum mechanics. But boy was I stupid. Because when I got to an actual introductory quantum mechanics class, my ass got whooped by how much more difficult it was mathematically. I mean, look at this. This is Dirac notation. In quantum mechanics, these are used literally everywhere. But what if I told you this is just compact notation to do math with complex matrices? It took me a while to understand that kind of funky notation, and that's just one of the many that exist across physics. I actually remember walking out of my quantum mechanics one final and knowing I scored a 20% on that exam. Uh, I did. And now I'm in graduate quantum mechanics, and they're now have jumped the difficulty in math again. I'm more prepared for it this time, but still, I didn't realize the math could get so much worse again. It's like I'm peeling away layers of an onion, except every single new layer just makes me want to cry more sometimes. You do not understand how many times still when I'm reading a physics textbook, the author just goes, I'm um, using equation 5.3, it is trivial that we can obtain the general form, and then just writes it down. And I look at that and interpret it as, it's so fucking obvious using equation 5.3 that we can get this general form that if you don't see that immediately, you might just be a dumbass. And I'm sitting there reading the book like, alright, great, maybe I should just be done for the day because clearly I do not see that. <sighs> Anyways. Besides the math, what can make physics so uniquely difficult is it's also conceptually challenging to understand sometimes. And that can be anything from trying to understand the forces that act on a car as it goes around a turn, to trying to understand why time moves slower the faster you move. Let's use that second idea and go over a quick example some of you may have seen before. Now pretend you are a super cool person who just on full screen the video and hit the subscribe button down below, and you're on a spaceship that's moving at about half the speed of light. You turn a flashlight on, and so does someone who is standing still on Earth. Now, you will actually both measure the same speed of light. Why? Because Einstein did the math into the very real, definitely not fake quote of, yeah, time just works like that, bitch. So yeah, time moves slower for the person on the spaceship compared to that person on Earth, which allows the speed of light measured to be the same. And it's true, even it feels like that shouldn't make any sense at all. So once again, building this better conceptual understanding of physics is gonna come down to again, having a better understanding of the math that represents it. And yes, having a bad teacher can make it a lot harder to do this. So if you wanna learn physics better independently, here are three ways that you can do so. First, don't just try to memorize equations understand them on a deeper level. You don't know how many times I've seen people studying for introductory physics exams and they just go to all the homework sets and they memorize how to do every single different problem they were given. And then they get to the exam, they're like, oh my God, I have no clue how to solve this problem because they get a new situation they haven't encountered in the homework. And it's because you try to just memorize every scenario, but you never tried to understand the actual conceptual idea that the physics was trying to teach you. And that leads exactly into the second point, which is that you need to find ways to explain things in your own words. Probably the first time you're going to learn something, it's not going to make sense for your brain exactly. If it does, great. If not, find a way to write it down in your own words such that you can understand it better. And this is a technique that's used 
all the time in PhD level research too. Because when I was an undergrad, something that we did is to explain how a superconducting circuit worked, we made an analogy to relate this circuit to the swinging of a pendulum. And we were able to take different ways that this pendulum worked and relate it to different concepts in superconducting circuits. This not only allowed it to be easier for us to understand, but also made it a lot easier when we taught it to other people and did, went to conferences and presentations. And speaking of research, the third point is that you should go do cool stuff so that you have better reasons to remember concepts. When you work on a real project, you're going to have better reasons to actually have information stay in your brain. I remember that when I first learned Fourier transforms, I didn't fully get the importance of them, but once I finally used them in research, I was like, oh, that's why everyone won't shut up about these. So applying physics to real world problems gives you a better reason to actually understand it and remember it. So yeah, physics is hard and half the time the things you learn don't make any sense at all. But that's also why you and I keep clicking on videos that have catchy titles on new discoveries made in the field. It's a big fuck around and find out puzzle the universe has made us and we are all curious to understand it. You want to get better at it? Then you gotta keep pushing through the struggle. Everybody struggles. As I mentioned, every time I finally feel like I understand something, I get slapped in the face by the next thing that makes absolutely no sense. But you know what keeps me going? Knowing that one day I will be able to put trivial for an equation in a textbook. Knowing that nobody else will understand what I'm talking about. I'm just kidding. Kind of. Anyways, go do something that confuses you and feel free to come back whenever you need a reminder that no one has any actual clue what they're doing. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one.